Hey, what is up, everyone? Welcome to the Crack House Chronicles. I am Donnie, your host, and with me is a man who wants to remind everyone that when he was young, he was poor, but after decades of hard work, he is no longer young. It's Dale. <laughs> Damn right, I'm still poor, Dale. <laughs> What's going on, man? Oh, in the Crack House, do an episode, man. That's right. We're ready to do it. We're rocking and rolling, bud. I think so. You got any good shout-outs for anything? Yeah, we got one we like to sling out. Uh like to say, uh, very appreciative to uh, Take the Cookies, who gave us a, a five-star review on the, the old Apple Podcast gimmick. Said we was uh, very addictive, and she thoroughly enjoyed our, our take on stuff. And, man, we really appreciate that. Is it a she or a he? I don't know. Take, what it ever took the cookies. Take the cookies? Yeah. Is that somebody that's kin to take the cake? Might be. Take the cake, make the cake, bake the cake. Take the cookies. Take the cookies. Hmm. Take the cookies and run. What are they taking the cookies to? To the milk jar, I guess. Double dunking? Double dunking. Hmm. In a single bed. Well, whoever <laughs> take the cookies is, thank you for the thank you, Apple, thank you. Apple review. And if anybody else wants to go to Apple Podcast and rate and review like Take the Cookies did, just go over and click that five star and give us a review. Yeah, we appreciate it. Also, we want to remind everybody to go to the website, check out the store page. Yeah. Get you something cool, get you a t-shirt, get you something, represent the crack house. That's right, get you some good stuff, man. Show you love. Show you love. Or you can just drop a few dollars in the gas jar. Yep. Whatever you want to do. Yep, that's right, and man. If you don't do shit, that's cool, too. Yep. Just tell, you, tell a buddy to check us out. But if you just want to listen to us and not do anything at all, that's cool, too. That's right. We appreciate our listeners. That's right. All right, bud. We're going to get into our episode, man. All right. Let's do that. This one's a little, I don't know. I was going to say strange, but it's not really strange. It's just, I don't know. How do you explain this one? I don't know. It's got, it's got some controversy with it, but it really doesn't. I mean, it, I've studied it and you studied it, and it seems pretty straightforward, but um we're just going to get into it and see what people think. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of weird stuff around the straightforward stuff, so we don't know if it's weird or not. Mm-hmm. But at any rate, this is the case of Kendrick Johnson. KJ. That's what they called him. That's right. KJ. Now, Kendrick was born on October the 10th, 1995, in Valdosta, Georgia, to parents Kenneth and Jackie Johnson. And Kendrick was enrolled at Lowndes High School there in Valdosta. Where he was a student, and he was a, I think, a three-sport athlete. Yeah, two or three. Yeah, yeah he was very, very athletic, very outgoing, but he was described as quiet and just a nice kid. Good kid, yeah. Just all-around good kid. Good kid, good grades, really excelled in anything he'd done. He was like the one of the best guys on the team on any sport he chose, so he was pretty a natural athlete. Yeah. Yeah. Our story takes place, well, it starts on January the 10th, of 2013 and the time that we're talking about has been has a little bit of discrepancy some say it's at 109 p.m others say it's 1 30 p.m because they're going by time stamps dale on school footage you're right on some security cameras yes but somewhere around this time 109 somewhere along there kendrick is seen on the school grounds by a surveillance camera yep and he's walking into the old gym. Right. Now, the reason they call it that is this high school has uh, had built a new gym. But they still use the old gym for other stuff besides whatever they use the, <laughs> the yeah. new gym for. But I think the old gym was a little bit smaller than, yeah. the, than the new gym. Yeah, another one had like a, probably a lot more seating for a big athletic events, basketball games, stuff like that. So, mm-hmm. And this one they probably used more for practice and wrestling, maybe wrestling matches or something like that. And I think they used it for storage too. Yeah. But that's what we're going to get into. But they did still have classes and stuff in the, the old gym. I don't know what kind of class, but they were some some classes. Mm-hmm. But, Not like set down school classes, but some kind of stuff. Some kind of something going on just yeah. just because they had the space, I guess. Yes. But now in this old gym, like we said, there were some large wrestling mats that were rolled in an upright position in the corner that they were storing. Right. Yeah, usually they, they always said that they were all laid down, but they, they, they had just came back from like a – uh, I would say winter break, but we always call it Christmas break or whatever. Yeah, you know, when you're yeah. out for two weeks or whatever. And they had just went back to school. Either this was the first or second day back at school, and uh, went in there. And someone during the break had cleaned up and put them all vertical up against the wall in the corner. Yeah. So well, that makes sense. Yeah. Especially if you're going to do the floors or something. I don't know. Right. Yeah, makes sense. Now the mats were about six feet tall, and about how wide were I'm they? I'm thinking they were like the three feet or so when they rolled up. Yeah. But the 
the center hole diameter was about 14 and a half inches. So they couldn't get them rolled up completely tight without a hole in them. Right. These, Just because they're so thick. And they weighed about 700 pounds, too. Yeah. So, so they're big mass. So I guess it would be hard to roll them up completely tight. You'd have to have a hole in them. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yep. Now, these holes, students would use these holes to store uh, gym, stuff. Yeah, stuff. Gym equipment, shoes. I guess gym uniforms. Yeah, I guess whatever they said uh, that uh, basically you had to pay a fee to you to have lockers and this kind of stuff, which we did. And uh, I don't know if it was just their regular academic school locker or if it was a gym locker, which we had both. But mm-hmm. you know, so the kids that didn't want to pay or didn't want to buy the locker or, or whatever paid the fee of the year, they went in and hid their stuff in these mats, and then they would go in there and get it as they needed it, which is kind of odd off the bat to me, but. I guess if everybody's doing it, everybody's doing it. Yeah. Now, where we're from, we had to pay a locker fee. Yeah. We Whether you use it or not. We had no choice. <laughs> yeah. Now, our uh, gym lockers was different than our school lockers. You know, the ones in the hall, big metal stand-up like you're thinking about, but the ones in the in the, the gym or the, you know. The, the locker rooms. Yeah, locker rooms were just like a basket. A little cubby it, kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, slid into a hole and you, you uh, put your own lock on it and you had to do it because i had a van halen tour short it got ripped off out of there pulled it they pulled it through the little holes really yeah my 1984 tour shirt got ripped off yeah so anyway sorry we're back to kj no yeah we're back to kj (laughs) sorry (laughs) damn it still mad about that but now the mat where kj had stored his tennis shoes yeah him and a friend this is kind of odd to me too him and a friend shared a pair of shoes that they wore i guess he was going to I don't want to get ahead of myself, but uh, he was headed to uh, weightlifting class. So he's going. To, he was coming into the gym mm-hmm. to go in and grab his stuff, and then heading to the field house. So, but him and another guy shared his pair of shoes, so they would keep them in there, and then whoever needed them could go in there and grab them. Yeah. Okay. But now this is one thing I. It's kind of weird. I talked to you about off the air earlier. I think one day this week that, you know, him sharing a pair of tennis shoes. He was a three star athlete, a three sport athlete. Yeah. Uh, sharing shoes he would think he would have tennis shoes well he did have some tennis shoes but this was another pair of tennis shoes so that's why it's kind of weird maybe i'm sure i know a a lot of folks have their really really nice shoes that they don't want to do that so they take them off and put on other shoes to do that and then the really nice ones are like show shoes i got you (laughs) that makes sense i guess yeah because i've seen lots of folks like go somewhere and then they get out of the car and go to the trunk open up a trunk get on their really nice shoes and put them on and wear them to wherever they're going to come back and then they Put your nice shoes back in the trunk and put your flip flops on. Get the car. Not me. I don't give a shit. But I'm just saying. I've, yeah, seen, I've seen people do that. I don't have many shoes to do that with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the shoes on the foot. Yeah. The foot. But yeah. <laughs> but anyway. So that's but, what I'm thinking. This is kind of that, but, that route. But they shared shoes. Yes. And he was going to retrieve these shoes that had been stored in the mat. Right. But Kendrick was marked absent from his next class, like we talked about. Right. And it was weightlifting class. Mm-hmm. And that day or that evening he was re- expected to return home after a basketball game he had told his mom that he was going to stay after school for a basketball game yeah and but he didn't come home that night nope so it was not like him at all no huh? and jackie johnson that's his mom she reported kendrick missing at midnight that night well i think at 10 or 11 she actually got in the car and drove to the school and drove around and looking for everywhere to see if she could see him out like just out goofing around with some other kids and didn't see him and then when at 1201 that's when she called and said he was missing yeah now the next day on january the 11th 2013 uh jackie went to Lowndes high school yep she went back yep to let them know that kendrick had been reported as missing right i think the sheriff's department actually called her about four in the, four in the morning to mm. check and he still hadn't been home so the next morning, she decided to get up and go to school and see what was up. And I think the school even helped her print out some missing flyers posters and things. Yep, she was in the guidance talking about what they were going to do and this kind of thing. Yep. Now, at 10.30 a.m. that morning, the same day, January 11th, there were some students that were sitting on a few of the wrestling mats that we were talking about that were being stored up against the walls. Mm-hmm. And I guess the students were filling out some paperwork or something. Something about a survey or something. Or I don't know. It's what, it's what I heard. Yeah, I mean, one of the gym teachers had added a little thing, had a little survey on it, and I don't know what it was. And they happened to notice that there were socks sticking out of the top of the one of the mats. Yeah, said uh, one of the girls had finished hers early, and she was looking, and she seen something white. She didn't know what it was mm-hmm. at first. So then they had to climb up on the bleacher, which are those bleachers in that gym are only like what two steps or yeah. something. They're really short, but 
she could uh, go up there and see up on top of the six foot rolls. Mm-hmm. And when you got over there, it indeed was socks. Yeah. And so after the, when she, when she seen the stuff and she thought it was socks, climbed up on top to go check, and indeed it was socks. And first she thought it was like somebody playing a joke or something. So she yelled at some of her friends when they came over and looked, and indeed they were feet in those socks. And then one girl screamed out, and then they went and got the the gym teacher. Yeah. And it was Kendrick in that mat. Yeah. But they tried to pull him out of the mat. Yeah, they laid it down. Mm-hmm. You know, and was going to try to get him out because he was in there inverted, so his feet sticking straight up, so his head was at the floor. Yeah, so like in a diving position, I guess you say. Like he, yeah, went down in the mat or right. something. Right, and one arm was was a uh, like toward right on the floor, and then his other arm was down by his side. So it's kind of like, well, you can't see me, but <laughs> yeah. So like he was uh, reaching down in the, inside the mat to get his shoes. Right. Much. It's, yeah, it's kind of what it appeared to be going on. Maybe the shoes had fell to the bottom and he was just trying to get them out. Right. So that's kind of what I was thinking. Because, you know, we had said they had just came back from uh, from break or whatever. And I wonder if they left those shoes in there during the, while they were gone. You know, and usually they have them, everything's laying down. Well, now everything's standing up. So he's gone, he walks in and goes like, oh, shit, where's my shoes? So, I mean, in, in the, while well, we are talking about the, the uh, 109, that was when he was caught on a surveillance camera actually coming into the gym. So, and then he kind of like, you can see him kind of jog off toward that corner where all this stuff was. So I was wondering myself if if he even knew where they were, if he was like, oh, no, where's my shoes? And he went in and jumped up and started looking in all of them. Got and, on top and started looking down in. Right. Yeah. And then go, oh, well, there they are. They're down in the bottom there or halfway down or, or whatever. That's kind of what, in my mind, that's what I think is going on. And here. he tried to reach down in there and get them and, and yeah. slid down in, in, in the mat. Right. Yeah. But we don't know this. We'll get into it a little yeah. bit deeper on more. But I just kind of wanted to throw it out there that why I thought maybe that uh, – he would jump up on her and try to figure it out because he's probably now. I don't know that he left his shoes there over the holiday, but it's very possible. Yeah, because you know if they were laying down, he stuck them in there. When they set them upright, he wouldn't they, know where he was. And they fell. One. They fell to the bottom. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. But now, like we said, these mats they weighed seven hundred pounds. Right. And with the aid of the teacher and the students, they were able to knock the mat down so it'd be laying on the ground. Right. Flat. And when they got the mat on the floor, they were. The teacher was going to try to help get him out. Yeah, pull him out head first. Yeah, but then they realized. Yeah, there was a smell of vomit and decomp. And blood. Yeah. Then they realized that he was not alive. Yeah, he was dead. So, uh, so the gym teacher sent all the students to the new gym so they wouldn't have to witness this. But it would come out later that Kendrick had been dead for, in that position for about 24 or 21 hours. Right. Yeah. So at this point, he calls 911, and there is a 911 call, but there's not a lot to it. It's just... Basically, there's a dead body in the gym, and she asked him what he said, and he said it again, and then so in the old gym, so then they come out. The, and the teacher sent all the students out, and the school actually went on lockdown. Yeah. But just keep in mind, Jackie was there at school at that time. Right. When her son was found. Yeah, because she is, you know, you said she was in the, in the guidance counselor office. When he got that call, she heard him say that they, was a, they found a body in, in the gym. Because the volume was up on his phone, mm-hmm. and then he got up and left. So you know she's sitting there the whole time, going, "Oh wow, what's going on?" You know. Mm-hmm. That's right. But the Lowndes County Sheriff's Office they started an investigation that day, and every student known to be in the gym when Kendrick was found was interviewed, and a video of the scene was taken. Right. And well, this is where we started getting into some weird stuff here. Yep. But there were two pair of shoes found in the mat with Kendrick. Yep. And one of the pair of shoes that he was wearing that day and but they were off his feet yeah and kind of like behind his knees yes a little bit stuck behind his knees right. so that's weird and we've got a picture of this i mean the actual mat him in it you can see his feet right and the shoes are tucked up behind his yeah we'll his post legs. we'll post that some of the some of the photos i don't want to post but no, we'll but, post that one but you can you can find all the photos of this you want to online but yeah we'll, we'll post a few but you know it would have been difficult to take those shoes off. It been it had been kicked off, and for him to land in that position, I think. Yes. And the other pair of shoes were the ones Kendrick had gone to the gym to get. Yeah. And they were on the floor underneath his body, near his head. Right. And there was blood found at the crime scene around the pair of shoes near Kendrick's head, where blood had dripped from Kendrick's face onto the floor. Because mm. I guess being upside down, yeah. blood's going to rush to your head and it's going to start leaking out. Yeah, eventually. Eyes and nose, ears, whatever. Any orifice it wants. Yep. 
And Kendrick's face was terribly swollen, Dale. Oh, yeah. Especially, you know, being upside down for 24 hours or 21 hours, I think is what it was. Yeah, 21. And the crime scene photos show Kendrick with an incredibly swollen face. And these photos, like we said, can be found on Google. And if you search, they're pretty bad. Yeah. But we're not going to post them. Yeah. Now, it kind of gets weird here because, you know, Georgia Law says that uh, anytime you find a, a body that is uh, deceased, you should call the coroner right away. Yeah. But for some reason, the sheriff didn't call the coroner for six hours. Six hours. Now, I know they were talking to all these kids or whatever. I guess that's what they were doing. I don't know, but that's just really weird to me. Mm -hmm. And they said the coroner's office is only like a mile from the school, so he could have been there. In a minute. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the first weird thing. Yeah. Yeah. And one of the biggest debates – in all this about Kendrick and were his, were his shoulders. And yeah. some people have a lot to say about this, but his shoulders were 19 inches wide. Yeah. And they say, or they claim that it made him hard to fall into that 14 inch opening in that mat. Right. When, she, when you first say that it does, but in my mind, you know, cause this is when we're getting into it, people are thinking somebody killed him and stuffed him in here. Yeah. Did he fall in or did he climb in or did someone kill him? And that's the big debate, yeah. basically. Now, to me, I really, I don't know. I don't want to get into what I think yet. But looking at the, looking at the whole thing, to me, I just don't see how there's time, you know, for someone to come in. Because you see him walk in the gym. Yeah, on okay? the surveillance video. Yeah. That's at 1 o'clock or 10 after, whatever it was. Well, then if he's, they find him the next morning, 10, 30, 11. Well, if he's been there for 21 hours, then that don't give you much time to do anything and there were still classes now you know we said they had surveillance footage and you can think you could just go to that and see what happened but all the cameras in the gym were motion detected and even when they came on it was kind of weird because they was like it wasn't like a, a solid video it was like they just take so many shots or something a stop and go kind of thing yeah it was yeah. kind of weird yeah because you can you can find a lot of this online too but while they're like you know you see walking and then the next thing you know there's kids there and then the kids are going so it's like whatever set off the the camera at the time i guess but mm. so you can't really go by the camera and only the only camera that actually shows the corner where the uh the mats are is extremely blurry and you can't see the tops of the of the rolls yeah so that camera's pretty much useless yeah now kendrick's dad kenneth he tried to recreate this of being able to get into one of those mats and there's a photograph of him trying to get into that mat right and it shows him with his head down in it, but it's laying on the ground. He's not, the mat's not upright. Right. Him going down into it, you know, with gravity, pulling your body down into yeah. it. So, you know, and that's where they're saying, you know, there's no way that he could do that. You know, they, you know, their theory is that uh, they think he was, he was beaten up, killed, and then rolled up in the mat and then stuck over in the corner. Yeah. Well, I don't know about that. Um, I don't, I mean, I guess it's possible. I guess everything's possible, but. Remember this this mat weighs seven hundred pounds. Yeah. So but like I told you, my theory is I think that basically like I said, went up on top and looked and if you stuck one arm down, like if you're trying to grab it and then it slips a little bit because these mats are kinda they're they're he- they're heavy, but they're still mats, so they're gonna be slightly flexible. I think when like if you stick one arm down in the hole and one arm's back you're going to get a little thinner than if you're trying to go square shouldered. Mm-hmm. And then if you're reaching and then like you keep your one arm back to hold the edge of the thing in case you get a little too deep so you can pull yourself out. And if you keep reaching and then, uh, you know, the, whatever's in the hole below you, the hole's getting a little bit bigger. It's going to keep sliding out of your reach. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking. And maybe you got in too deep and couldn't get back and then you just slid in. Mm-hmm. That's what I, I, I'm leaning towards right now. But I mean, it could be a lot of different stuff, but I just don't think, there was time for people to go in there and beat him up, kill him, roll him up in a mat and stick him over in the corner. When, when the camera showed it, I think three minutes later, other people came in the gym. Yeah. But we can't really go. I mean, we keep referring to the camera, but the, the, there were three or four cameras in the gym and none of the time stamps were synced up and they were all on different servers or it's like DVRs or whatever. So it's, mm-hmm. it's kind of hard to put a real timeline together. Truthfully. Yeah. yeah. But now the Johnson family, they were pretty convinced that he was murdered. Yes. Yeah. And they asked Reverend Floyd Rose of the Valdosta Southern Christian Leadership Conference to run an independent investigation 
into KJ's death. Well, you know, they were kind of pissed off because it, w- it wasn't long at all where before the sheriff's department closed the case and said it was an accident. Yeah. So they're like, wait, you didn't even really. Yeah, they didn't take anything into evidence, the other shoes they found. Right, or... there was another shoe, or maybe it was the same shoe or the, of the pair, the one that was in the bro, I'm not sure. And then there was a hoodie, and there was supposed to be some, uh, I think, some blood splatter on the wall, but it wasn't really near where he was. And some other stuff, but then you know a lot of people said you know they didn't even wear like little booties on their shoes when they went in on the crime scene. You know, they could have been tracking in and out, but I don't know. When I seen when I saw the pictures, the hoodie was on the other side of the gym from where he was, so I don't even know if that's relevant. But it could have been, I guess. But it was like a small Hollister hoodie. Yeah. And then uh, they found some bloody tissues in the feet, in the girls' bathroom, but they said that. One of the girls in the color guard the night before had got hit and, and busted her nose or something, so it could have come from that. No, I don't know about the wall. I don't know if it splattered on the wall. But. I've never been able to walk into a gym and not see some kind of gym clothes somewhere. Right. A hoodie some or a shoes, shirt or people left stuff everywhere. Oh, yeah. 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 Now, a lot of people are saying, you know, if he did fall in himself, why didn't somebody hear him, you know? And uh, it was a pretty neat little video on uh, YouTube where somebody actually kind of recreated the circumstances here in a way that like a guy had actually crawled in one of these mats not the same one is actually a little bit smaller than the one that kj was found in Mm -hmm. and they stand him up on his head and they didn't tell him to holler for help and you can barely hear him and then they tell him try to wiggle it over and this guy inside is actually a wrestler uh amateur wrestler and uh he can't do anything with it and then they let him out with them you know 15 20 seconds and he said it was really scary and it was really super hot in there and you couldn't do anything you couldn't move at all mm-hmm. so i can imagine if you fell in that sucker you know it wouldn't take long yeah to do suffocate you know, yeah yeah now just a couple of days later on the 14th of january 2013 the loudest county authority said kendrick's body showed no injuries following preliminary autopsy results right and investigators speculated that kendrick went into the rolled up mat to retrieve a shoe and couldn't get out and investigators believe his death was a tragic accident but his mom and dad believe he was murdered well you know and i get that you don't want to yeah you know, you're flipping out here you got your kid he's a super good kid and all of a sudden this weird stuff happens and they don't really even look at it much i can understand mm-hmm. you want to somebody to look into it so but the investigators, they ruled that Kendrick's death was an accident. Right. And the announcement came just an hour before friends and family and civil rights activists marched on the outside of Loundis High School demanding justice. And this was in May of 2013. Now, the Johnson family said information from paramedics, you know, that were on the scene. Right. They contradicted what the law enforcement said. And the report from the responding paramedics showed Kendrick's body was partially rolled up in a wrestling mat like we said but his torso head arms were exposed and the family's attorney said that you know this all contradicts the investigators claim that kendrick's body was found upside down stuck in the mat well with time they got there you know they'd already tried to get him out so yeah. that might have could explain that it could have but now on june the 6th 2013 the loudest county judge granted the johnson family permission to exhume kj's body for a second autopsy and they got financial help from the NAACP and the SCLC. And the Johnson family arranged for the exhumation of Kendrick's body for an independent autopsy to be formed by private pathologist Dr. William Anderson. Right. You I know, think he's a pretty well-known pathologist, I think. I know, you know, before the, the first autopsy, you know, they went in and uh, his grandfather wanted to see the body. And first they told him no, and then he, I think he pulled some kind of, uh, press conference, you know, saying they wouldn't let him. And so Georgia law says, I think, uh, within 24 hours, you have to turn the body over to the family if you don't suspect uh, foul play. Mm-hmm. And since they were saying it was an accident, then he had every right to see see the body. It wasn't his dad. His dad was still on the road. His dad was a truck driver, so he was still, you know, coming home from wherever he was. I think yeah. it was in Pennsylvania or somewhere. But, uh, and yeah, and he said, that, you know, he went in there and, and they – made him un- unzip the bag and let him see him. But he said when he went in, it was really warm and there. It was kind of weird. Even when he opened up the drawer and slid it out, it was kind of warm, which is odd mm-hmm. for somewhere where they keep bodies. But yeah. he was saying then that there was a lot of weird stuff, you know, like his face was really swollen. Like he said, there's disco- discoloration in his upper torso, and it looked like his uh, fingernails had been clipped. Yeah, because they said that. Kendrick liked to keep his fingernails long. Yeah. 
which I don't know. So, I mean, I guess that's just something you notice right away or something, you know, but they mm-hmm. thought that was odd. But, you know, then they did the autopsy and stuff. And then but when they did the autopsy, they found out that Kendrick's organs were missing. Yeah, the second one. And, yeah, this was the second one, and his body had been stuffed with newspaper. Which and is kind of odd. Kind of odd, but they used to do that a long time ago, I think. Right. Well, I think, you know, uh, the funeral home that done the original after the first autopsy stuff, when they did they done it for free. Yeah. So whether they were cutting corners because they'd done it for free or it if it's just it. maybe this what they still did, I don't know. I've never... I guess I've never seen inside somebody after. <laughs> I don't know the hell everybody it, ever seen could have been like that. I don't know. But it's not against the law to stuff them with the newspaper. No, it might not be very appropriate, but it's not illegal. But they said they normally fill it with cotton or sawdust, so I don't know see what the difference is between sawdust and newspaper. Yeah, sawdust is kind of gnarly. Yeah. Now, I did hear that some places now use like more like a cotton, mm. like a bandage kind of stuff, Yeah, whatever. whatever cotton batting or something kind of thing. Or something. Yeah. But I don't know. I've never really even thought about that until we heard this case. But now, they don't know what happened to the missing organs. No. And the Georgia Bureau of Investigation has said the organs were returned to the body following the first autopsy. And the funeral home claimed they were missing when the body arrived to them. Right. So there was an independent transport that used to be a police officer that yeah. was doing the transport. But that is kind of odd. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. Even, uh, I think, what not uh, the clothes were missing too, right? Yeah. When they when they brought him back. Yep. But anyway, yeah. When uh, you know they brought him in and the organs were missing, and they even said they had signed, the, uh, you know, a paper saying that they were receiving the body and the, the organs and the, the mm-hmm. clothing. And it was like three t-shirts, boxers, socks, shorts, and all that stuff. But they didn't have any clothes either. So I wonder if they just brought him in and said, "Here, sign here, or whatever," and they didn't actually do a physical inventory or or what's going on there. Mm-hmm. It's kind of weird. Yep. But they say it's not uncommon during an autopsy for organs to be placed in a plastic bag and placed in the body's cavity. But usually the funeral home will either dispose of the organs appropriately or embalm the organs and replace them. Right. And then with this, the, the somebody said they thought they were they had been uh, done away with because they were uh, decomposing. Yeah. But I don't know about that. Yep. No, but, like I said, there's a lot of weird stuff going on here. But now, Jackie Johnson, she believes the funeral home destroyed KJ's organs to destroy evidence. And, but they can't prove any of this, but they think that Kendrick's organs were examined by the GBI, and the slides and samples taken from the organs are at least still in storage, is what mm. she claims. Uh, yeah, now that's pretty bad, you know. I mean, I don't, I can see how. They think that, you know, everybody's against them here, that they're trying to hide something, you know. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. It's There's a lot of a lot of sketchy shit going on here. Yep. Whether, yep. It's, whether it's hiding something or not, it's still pretty sketchy. Yep. Now, on September 3rd of 2013, the independent autopsy report from Dr. Anderson said that K.J. died from unexplained, apparent, non-accidental, blunt force trauma. And the conclusion contradicted the original autopsy from the GBI, which was an accident. Hmm. They said he, they found some kind of bruising on his neck. Yeah, it said it was a really small, um, like a two or three inch, like a little bruise around the base of his uh, his neck or burn near his brain stem or something. Mm-hmm. Like maybe he'd been hit with something, but I'm not sure. Now, on October 31st, 2013, U.S. Attorney Michael Moore he said the FBI will help find Kendrick and how he died in January. And the announcement came a day after South Georgia judge granted the Johnson family access to the Lowndes high school surveillance video from the time of KJ's death. And speculation was that the video looked edited. Right. But the school district says uh, what they produced to the sheriff is the raw feed and no edits. Right. Now, in the first place, when the, when the, when this first happened in the sheriff's department, told the school they need the video they didn't give them all the video they just give them i guess what they thought was relevant to the to him i think even on a flash drive or something it was just little, yeah little clips but you know here i think because it was like 1900 hours because it's like 36 cameras and all this mm-hmm. stuff when they got it here and i can see why they think it it might be edited because if you watch it it's just stuff jumping around everywhere you know the little clips i've seen because mm-hmm. it's really weird i can see somebody and then it 
next thing you know there's nobody there and then next thing you know there's three four people there so it's really kind of weird and I'm, i guess it's just the, the on off thing with the the motion detector oh yeah that's gotta be what it is because you know it said it's not like it's down a hallway or nothing it said basically you had to be in frame for it kicked off it wouldn't come on if it was something far away or whatever Mm -hmm. yeah now 290 hours of surveillance tape from 35 cameras that covered the gym area was released to cnn following a court request and a forensic analysis enlisted by cnn found the tapes from two cameras are missing an hour and five minutes of footage while another set was missing two hours and 10 minutes of footage and some of the apparent lapses in coverage were found to result from camera systems that were not synchronized with one another. Hmm. And other missing footage was a result of the camera's motion-activated function not being triggered. And camera systems were motion-activated using a change in light pixels to turn recordings off and on. So I wonder how they'd know how much footage is missing when these cameras turn on and off, and all the time steps are different. I don't know. I mean, I guess they got people smarter than I am for, for forensically and analyzing them, but... But the area where KJ's body was discovered, where the gym mats were stored, you know, like we were talking about, was outside the range of all the surveillance cameras. Yeah, they were pitiful. Yep. Now we're going to get into some a little bit of speculation about what the Johnson family thinks okay. uh, happened. And the Johnsons believe that two brothers named Brian and Brandon Bale murdered KJ. And they actually named them at rallies on uh, Kendrick's Memorial Facebook page. Yeah, that's crazy. I mean, these two dudes, um, they had one, he had been in a fight with one of these guys, but it was it was uh, coming back from a football game, so I don't know if these two dudes were on the same football team. I'm sure they were. Yeah. And uh, something had sparked something about uh, one of them's girlfriend or something, and then they had got into a scuffle. And I don't know how big a fight it was, but basically it was – probably 18 months before this happened. So that was, that was where the heat was from. Mm -hmm. And then, so they thought, you know, and and I'd heard that that after that, even they had done a science project together and some other stuff that they were still friends being Mm -hmm. on. Now the Johnson say that they were not friends, but I don't know. And I don't know how well they knew who all he was friends with anyway, but this is where this comes from because they knew about the fight. But they said at one time there was some bad blood between them, but they had rekindled the relationship and, and become friends again, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Now, eventually, the the girl in this thing has said that none of that was true anyway, so I don't know. Yeah. And from the information about the Bell brothers, both Brian and Brandon appear to have a solid alibi from the time Kendrick was seen on the school surveillance footage. Right. When he was entering the gym. Yeah. On January the 10th. Yeah, Brian was shown in class on a camera that was completely on the other side of the school at the time that he was going into the gym. Mm-hmm. And Brandon was out of town on a wrestling tournament. And he had, uh, they'd went to lunch around 1130 or so. And I'm not, there's still speculation on what time the bus actually left, but they knew that they were a good ways away from the school because of the wrestling coach's cell phone pinged like at 153, Mm -hmm. many, many miles away from wherever they were headed to. Yep. Yeah. Now there's been a lot of legal stuff going on this suing back and forth and a lot of mess, Dale. Yeah. Um, a lot of legal activity. Now, on February the 7th of 2014, uh, KJ's parents, they accused of the Harrington Funeral Home of fraud and negligence after the second autopsy showed uh, KJ, KJ's organs were missing and his body was stuffed with newspaper. And they claimed that the body at Harrington Funeral Home didn't tell them the truth about their son's body. Yeah, can't blame them, I guess. Yeah, I guess. And July 29th of 2014, uh, KJ's family filed a wrongful death suit against Lowndes County Board of Education. And the lawsuit claims the school board did not properly investigate a 2009 incident involving an altercation on school bus between Kendrick and another student. So I guess that's what we were just talking about. Yep. Yep. So. So they're, I mean, they're really upset and they want to know what the heck's going on. And they, they're not buying this accident thing. And they're just, they just want to know what's going on. Yep. I can't really blame them. Yeah. Now, moving into the next year of 2015, January the 15th, Kendrick's parents, they filed a $100 million lawsuit accusing classmates of killing Kendrick at Lowndes High School. These are these bail boys. Yeah. And 38 defendants were named in the suit. And the lawsuit said the three classmates attacked KJ. Mm. Yeah. 
March the 2nd of 2016, this was the next year, the Johnsons withdrew the $100 million wrongful death suit as there wasn't enough proof. And the Lowndes County School Board issued a statement in their response, and the school board was also named in the suit. Hmm. So, yeah, there's a lot of lawsuits going on back and forth, Dale. Yeah, they just wanted some answers, man. They're, yeah. they're upset and they're mad. And I can't say that they're blaming because I think, you know, even though in my head I'm leaning toward accident, it still was pretty shoddy investigation. Yeah, I and, agree. And they just want some answers. I don't know that how far I would go as far as, you know, doing all this stuff. I definitely would not come out and name people's names who were definitely – not really being investigated to say I think they killed them uh, because that's defamation <laughs> yep. and you're just asking for it. But I mean, I understand their, I understand what you know, why I don't really know what they're going through, but I understand why they're doing what they're doing. But talking about all these lawsuits, Dale, the bail boys that were, they were accusing of them of killing KJ. One of them had a full ride. Yeah. So I think it was what, Florida state. Florida state is a linebacker. Yeah. He, yeah, had a he full... was highly recruited. Yeah. Yeah, and because of this, they had contacted Florida State University, KJ's parents did, yep. and told him that he was part of a... He was being investigated for murder when he wasn't. Yeah. yeah because, see, they went to their house, and uh, the authorities went to the, the Bell Boys' house, and they went in and uh, confiscated what was their phones, I think, or something, yeah. to see what was going on, but they never found anything. But after that, they said, yeah, they were being investigated, and uh, they withdrew his scholarship on signing oh, yeah. day. He lost best. his ride. Yeah, and he, you know, we don't know if he's innocent or not, but he damn sure ain't been charged with anything and really hadn't been investigated. He wasn't a suspect at all. Just because they called him and said, and then after that, any other school that showed any interest in that boy, people on Twitter or the family or whatever would, so just as soon as any interest popped up, they would directly go to him and tell him this, and all of a sudden they wouldn't, wouldn't be interested anymore. Yeah. So it's pretty sad if if he's innocent, which, you know, we all assume he is because he hasn't been in charge or anything. But, you know, it's kind of like, he does I mean he's killed his future right there. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. They they ruined his future. Right. Whether he was guilty or not. I mean, he hadn't been charged with anything. He right. wasn't a suspect. Right. And I'm sure he was questioned. I get that. But. And, re- and this is the older brother, not the one that yeah. he got in a fight with. Yeah. So, there's that, too. Yeah, they just ruined him. Now, on July 11, 2017, the Johnson's family filed a third lawsuit with the Superior Court of Bibb County. And the defendants range from Lowndes County officials to former classmates, Dale. So they were just putting everybody, anybody they could do. And, I'm, yep. and I understand, you know, I guess they're just trying to squeeze somebody for information, mm-hmm. you know. Forcing. Yeah. Yep. And just a month later, on August the 10th, 2017, the parents of KJ and their counsel, Albany lawyer Shaveen B. King Jr., were ordered by a judge to pay nearly $300,000 in attorney fees to those they accused of killing their son and the parties they alleged to cover it up. Right. Wow. Yeah. So I guess that's what happens when you start slinging lawsuits at everybody. Yeah. And especially if you don't really have nothing to back it up except for what you feel in your gut. Yep. Now, January the 5th, 2018, KJ's parents filed to have his body exhumed again. Damn. And a second... Exhumation was approved, and the GBI conducted the autopsy and determined Kendrick's death was accidental positional asphyxia. Right. That's a mouthful. And the results of the third autopsy determined KJ's cause of death was non-accidental blunt force trauma to his right neck and right thorax, which is in the body cavity between the neck and the abdomen. So the first time... It was blunt force trauma, and now it's non-accidental blunt force trauma. Yes. And this was done by the same guy. Yep. Yeah, okay. Now, so, man, I don't know. I really don't. I'm not a pathologist, so I don't know. And I'm just saying how much time has passed since he passed away to this. I mean, how can you really tell? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I ain't trying to be graphic or nothing, but he's been, been there a while. Yeah. Okay. I just don't know how you could still see blunt force trauma but maybe that's just me not knowing what i'm talking about yep now on october 11th 2019 members of kendrick's family requested that the federal and state investigation into kendrick's death be reopened so this is basically a year after that last that third autopsy yeah and the request to reopen what happened on what would have been his 24th birthday Mm. yeah so seven years because 
So it had been six years when they'd done – so he'd been passed away for six years when they'd done the third autopsy. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Finally, this year, in March of 2021, authorities reopened their investigation into Kendrick Johnson's death. And according to the Lowndes County Sheriff, Ashley Polk, if there's questions, they're legitimate. I need to know the answers myself. The only way I'm going to know is to look at the evidence myself, and that's according to the sheriff. Right. And Polk and his team were able to secure a wealth of evidence from federal authorities, in part to an appeal from the Johnson family in November of 2020. Now the sheriff has enough evidence in hand to perhaps allow them to solve this mystery once and for all. And Polk said the investigation may take up to six months. Both he and the Johnson family are optimistic that justice will finally be served. It's been eight long years, said Kendrick Johnson's mother, Jacqueline. I'm feeling hopeful. Well, I hope they find out, man. You know? I really do. I mean, you know, even, you know, as we was talking about, they were suing everybody in lawsuits, even in, in one part when, what was the first sheriff's name, Chris? Uh, Pi, uh, Chris Pye, I think. And they said, you know, even his his son and some other stuff was involved on this and this thing, but the thing is, he didn't even have a son. Yeah. So they were just, some people were just making up shit. So, I mean, I guess you get desperate, but whatever. I don't I don't know who. I'm not saying the Johnson family, uh, immediate family said that, but somebody threw that out there as far as how it was rigged, investigation, yeah. all that stuff. Everybody was in on it and stuff. And if you think about it, if this is a cover-up, how many people would have to be involved for it to actually be a cover-up? I mean, it yeah. would have to go. Now, we did, did we, we mentioned that the Bell brothers, their father was an FBI agent. I was about to mention that, yeah. So that looks kind of weird. And then they said that the the girl who actually was filling out that survey and seen the socks sticking up and actually found found him was the uh, superintendent's daughter, right? Yeah, so there's a lot of. There's a lot of, whole lot of, hmm, stuff, but I don't know that it means anything. Yeah, a lot of people involved with high-level positions. Right. So, you know, you it it take a lot of people to cover this up. Yeah, and with a lot of with a lot of pull with the county and the, and the government. And really, why would you want to? I mean, I don't yeah, know, I guess I don't know. But you know, I hope they find out what happens. I knew, you know, I seen the thing where it said one of part of the reasons they got this open back up is that somebody had a twenty five second recording of somebody that they gave uh, uh, K, uh, KJ's dad. Well, I think they sold it to him, but it was supposedly somebody admitting that they did it on audio. Mm-hmm. Now, we don't know who that was on there, but they said, basically, they I didn't hear the audio because it hasn't been released, but he uh, paraphrased saying, basically, it was somebody saying, you know, I, I was shouldn't have done it. I was just young and stupid. He never deserved what happened to him, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. Basically saying he had killed him, whoever it was. But yeah. So I don't, I don't know. I guess maybe that's one, one reason they can get it opened up back up. But I don't know. This is just a... It's a case that seems kind of straightforward, but there's a whole lot of shadiness going on around it, so it makes you think that maybe it's not. Yeah, I agree there's a lot of shadiness going on, especially with the them not calling the coroner in yep. and the investigation. I mean, it it should have been created or should have been investigated as a crime scene. Yes. It should have. You know, a little bit more stuff involved. Yeah. Doing what you had to do to make it a crime scene. Yeah, because how, how bizarre is that? You yeah. Know, whether... You know, I don't know, finding a, you know, a, a kid inside of a, a mat like that rolled up. Yeah. But, you know, I don't know. I'm, I've been back and forth, and I'm trying to figure out in my mind how this can happen. And like I said earlier, I just don't think – I don't think there was time for three kids, like they said in that one lawsuit, you know, to, to beat him up. And a lot of this thing where they're coming from the beatings is because they actually took photos – of his face really close up after autopsy. Now, you know, after the autopsy, I mean, when they, they cut him open and, you know, they're going to have to, I don't want to get too graphic, but, well, they, well, you know, they have to cut cut the, the skin off around your head or whatever to uh, get, to the, get brain. the brain out. So yeah. they have to basically peel your face down, you know, mm-hmm. and you've seen that done before. And so when they put it back, it's not going to look like it did no. before it started. So he actually took pictures of that and then, you know, posted it everywhere. You know, like saying you don't think it was a beating or whatever, and they posted it in the picture. They had these on shirts too. Yeah, seven hundred shirts. Like yeah. there was a picture of him before, you know, like basketball playing, looking at him, and then this really, really bad picture. And then a lot of people was really pissed off about it, but he didn't tell anybody that it was 
uh, post uh, autopsy photo. Yeah. They just thought he had just been beaten that bad, yeah. and it, it's really a graphic photo, and we won't post it because yeah. it's nasty. But if you want to see it, you can look. It's it. not hard to find. You can search it because yeah. the the family put it out there, so you know. So I yeah. mean, I guess we could post it, but I just you know, I won't do. No, but uh, we will post a few photos. And stuff yeah, that are yeah, we can you know regular stuff. But I don't know. To me, in my mind, I'm still leaning. I, like I told you, you know, especially the mat is in the corner. You know, it was kind of behind a bunch of other mats. Yep. And I just think maybe he crawled up on top of it, seen the shoe, and went after it. And when he did, you know, he, he wriggled down there to get a little bit. And when he did, he went too far and he couldn't get out. Yep. And whether that's ha- not happened, I mean, whether that's what happened or not, that's kind of the way I'm leaning. And, you know, if somebody had done something to him that was foul, I hope to get caught and get prosecuted. But, you know, that's just the way it seems to me. I just It doesn't make sense for me that the kid was dead for 21 hours when they found him. So they ain't given much time at all to do this. I don't think – now, can three kids put them in a thing and roll them up in it and stand it up in the corner? Maybe. 700-pound mat. Yeah, maybe, maybe, you know. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, you're just tipping it up, but you still got to slide it over to the corner in the back behind – And but it was in the back behind all the other ones. Mm-hmm. So I don't I don't know. It just – it's really – this is a really strange case to me. And when we first started going, I'm like, eh, ain't nothing to this. But then, it, man, there's a shit ton to this. And a lot of it's really sketchy. So, but well, that, that's kind of the way I'm yeah. Well, either way, I hope the Johnson family does get some answers. I do too. And they find some closure to this. You know, either he was murdered or it was just accidental. Right. Either find something concrete. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I can't imagine digging my kid up twice no. to do this. I was, it was just, I don't know. It's just, so, I mean, you know, they they really want to know. Yep. And, well, I hope they find answers. Yeah, me too. I'm really, I hate it for them. All right, Dale, that is the case of Kendrick Johnson. Mm, and we really don't know no more than we did, but we'll keep his name out there and hope we find out something. All right. We're going to get out of here. Let's go. We want everyone to be safe, be careful, and always be aware of your surroundings. Because the next episode could be about you. This is The Crack, Crack House Chronicles. Chronicles.